What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at some new arrivals and stuff that's coming soon to Blade HQ which we haven't done in a long time. I know that tons of you guys check out Blade HQ every single day. Uh, it has been a while since I have done this uh, with this website so I'm really excited. There are a couple of things that I very much want to talk about and something that I'm literally going to buy immediately after this video. Uh, thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex and on TikTok at The underscore Metal underscore Complex. These pages will be linked down in the description so you guys can check them out if you want to without, you know, sitting with me and walking through it. That's perfectly fine. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. New arrivals time. We have a new Benchmade Mini Osborne. Uh, I believe this is like burnt copper. It's cool. Uh, oh, it's out of stock. Uh, Benchmade's only running their Magna Cut 60 to 62 for only $306? I still love Benchmade. I still love Benchmade. And I realize that it's it's almost like trendy to complain about Benchmade. Like if, if you're like brand new to the knife community, you walk in and like people are just screaming about Benchmade. So you're like, oh, I, oh, I, guess, I guess I should scream about Benchmade, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know. 200, well, that, why is that one so much more expensive? Oh, that's the full size. So they have a mini and they have a full size. Yeah, wowzers. Wowzers. Do you guys remember when the carbon fiber and S90V 940 was like, wasn't it like 250, 240, was it less than that at some point? Yeah, yeah, whoa, really expensive. Spyderco Shaman, also two hundred and sixty-five dollars. Uh, it's too bad that the Incendi. I just got this. This is one of the nicest dollar-for-dollar dollar knives from Civivi I have ever handled. That San Mai is so unbelievably nice. Uh, it's got a core, most likely. Like they're sitting at fifty-seven, fifty-nine. It's probably something like a VG ten or something similar for the core, but. Uh, you can get this in, I think the base version is Nitro V or 14C28N, but this version of it, they have such a high polish on um, the, uh, the what I assume are the stainless elements in that San Mai, and it is so nice. The base version of this is great, right? Uh, 14C28N, but you guys are, Civivi, you guys are running that so low. Like, what? Hold on. Do they have a non-coded version of that? Okay, let's see. That's weight, that's too low for 14C28N. But this version of the knife is truly beautiful. I don't know what we and Civivi's deal is running uh, their their steel so low. Here it is. Let's stop complaining. Let's stop complaining. Do you, do you guys, do you understand what this is? Ah! Oh my goodness. The Wii Ator. I'm going to buy this right now uh, well, not like on screen, but I, I'm going to buy this immediately after I end the video because I'm worried um, that they will be gone. This is this is an integral, right? Uh, this is clearly an integral with Wii's new sauce. If you've been watching my channel for, you know, any amount of time in the last six months, you'll know that I have specifically pointed out that Wii Knives has gone through an evolution. Uh, I'm not saying that their company evolved because I commanded it, because that's definitely not what happened. But there was a time period, I think, in 2021 where I said, hey, we, you guys are charging more money and you're not really doing anything different. And I think they already had the balls rolling. <laughs> I think they already had the gears turning. I think they, they have upgraded their techniques and their equipment and a lot of stuff. And all of a sudden they were absolutely slapping fools like me in the face with things like the GTC solid, which was un unreal, unreal. That's like uh, if uh, if Goku had gone Super Saiyan Blue when he fought Vegeta the first time. Nobody would have expected that. <laughs> that like that would have been a, a huge, you know, it would have kind of ruined the, the whole uh, five episode thing they did there. But um, yeah, that's it was nuts. So anyways, this is an integral with that sauce. Uh, if the last time you handled a Wii knife was 2020, 2021, some of their 2024 stuff is 
unrecognizable in terms of quality. This will undoubtedly have that sauce. This is an integral, 8.35 inches, so full size, CPM 20 CV. Obviously, I wish they'd you know, get that a little bit higher. They, they always seem to heat treat it 5961, but okay. Who's the designer? It's freaking Dalibor Burgum. Dalibor Burgum is uh, a, a big deal. Uh, my, I have a, a custom on order from him. Um, and I, I, I thought that his work is some of the most incredible that I've ever seen, you know, dating past a decade. Uh, I, this is an, a completely unexpected collaboration. Uh, this is undoubtedly, um, like, I love his design language. I love his work. Um, but this, this is, you know, has the potential to be one of the most beautiful knives that we has ever released. But I think we, we need to emphasize here that this is a titanium integral with the Wee Magic Sauce designed by Dalibor Bergam for three, Dalibor Bergam for $374. Now, if you're new, you're going to look at that price tag and think $374 for a pocket knife, right? Yeah, if you're new, that's kind of hard to process. If you've been around for a bit, you'll know exactly why that's a screaming deal. Uh, if you don't need an integral, if you don't need, I mean, like nobody needs an integral, nobody needs titanium, you don't need 20 CV, right? You don't need it to be designed by Dalibor Burger and all that. But when we are comparing apples to apples, other companies releasing titanium integrals with premium materials, right? That is a stupidly good price. It is quite rare. To, I mean, like, yeah, there's some integrals floating around out there for like the high 200s, but I mean, are, are they really the same thing? No. Like if we're talking about some of the premium integrals floating around out there made by Chinese production companies, it's pretty rare to get all of that, especially contoured. Like this is obviously beautifully contoured for under 400. That's pretty, excuse me, had a monster before I started this, if you can't tell. That's pretty rare. Uh, I will be buying exactly this version. They have uh, a few different versions, uh, even a Damasteel version if you want one for $637, which, you know what? It's not, it's a, as far as like uh, Wii's pricing goes, I'm not even upset about that because this is an integral. Yeah, they're charging a lot more for the Damasteel, but I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw uh, an integral knife with Damasteel for even from a Chinese company for like less than <laughs> like seven hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, that's that's pretty it's pretty great. Um, but uh, truthfully, considering you can just get the base version, the other version that I think looks awesome is this. This says polished gray titanium and then a 3.6 inch polished gray blade. Polished gray. I'm real tempted to pick this one up because I've, I've not seen them do a knife in polished gray. And I think that this is going to end up being looking a lot different than what it looks like in the pictures. I, just, I feel like I might end up kicking myself because this is going to be like some super spectacular uh, thing that I just have not seen before. What is the fin? Or what is it, it, polished gray finish? Like it just says polished gray. How did you achieve that? Is is it a coating? Right? Polished gray. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I got to make a decision here. But um, yeah, don't skip those. Don't sleep on those. That is, that's a big deal, and um, I feel like nobody's talking about this. The reason I'm going to buy it, a lot of you say, why don't you just have we send it to you? I requested that one, and they said, I, I don't know if we'll have any available, which is perfectly understandable. I'm willing to pay for it. That'll be the first Wii knife that I have bought in a very long time. This is the new Axial Shift in Magna Cut, which, um, yeah, def definitely going to uh, definitely gonna make waves. Uh, it, this is a USA made. Let's get one that with a blade that I really like. Actually, let me let me go back one page. I feel like maybe there was like a nice clean. No, they're all. I think these are going to be two tone. So right here, I'm not sure without that. Two twenty nine. Uh, USA. Right. This is about the same size as your um, Microtech Ultratech, right? But um, less expensive, way less expensive. In fact, this is Kershaw Livewire, 
uh, price range. Kershaw Lavar is also great. This is one of the most competitive, truly USA um, double action OTF knives. I don't love this um, axial. I'm not sure why you had to put that there. Like maybe just down here. Can, why couldn't it have been axial magna cut down here? But you know what? I'm not going to complain too much. Um, magna cut and milled uh, aluminum made actually made in the USA, not like the fake companies that are like, oh yeah, we like have everything made in China and then we just put it together here and call it USA made. No, this is a real USA made uh, OTF. So as far as your real competitors go, Kershaw uh, with the live wire, Microtech Ultratech, Guardian Tactical Recon 35, uh, and then Heretic Manticore E, I think is right around the same size. Um, yeah, these, uh, that's an exceptional price point. People are really going to enjoy those. It's been a while since we've seen Axial, you know, do a drop like this. Um, so this is pretty exciting. Uh, if you can legally own uh, and or carry uh, an OTF of this blade length in your area, uh, and you, you're into OTFs, um, especially the USA made stuff, I would 100% uh, get your notification for that. That is definitely a big deal, and that's going to be talked about a lot. There's a Mordax just sitting there. Ha! I should have made a post about that. That'll be gone by tomorrow. Uh, but that's cool. We haven't seen the Mordax in a long time. CPM S45 uh, VN. <laughs> I forgot the VN part. But yeah, that's cool. Man, I feel like the Mordax was the button lock that was uh, that came out. It, it was. It was the button. It was the Protec button lock that came out before the Protec Malibu, and the Malibu set off the button lock trend. You can say it was this or that or a combination. The Pro the Protec Malibu was this was the the match that lit that fire, uh, and then people kind of like forgot about but didn't really forget about the Mordax. But it's sitting right there. It's a great knife. There's also an Oligarch there, which is their new. Um, <coughs> Sinkovich uh, collab. Very cool. Definitely. Um, I have that knife. It's really great. Uh, my mouse pad is glitching out. Sorry about that. Whole bunch of Kaiser stuff. The Dogfish is a really nice knife. Um, the Holger's great, and so is the Cormorant, but um, they're just a little bit awkward. Um, Jack Wolf knives, the Benny, those are super duper popular. We have a Combat Troodon Production Interceptor. So if you're wondering what that is, that's a blade shape that has pretty much been exclusive to Customs. right? So they're calling this a Signature Series. They're charging you $200 for that blade shape, which, <laughs> which doesn't really cost... I, I, I couldn't imagine that that's too complicated versus their standard stuff. But if you love the Interceptor blade shape, you can get it. You can get it on this now, um, which is kind. It's kind of neat. That's a Gen three. What is SS Black? SS Black. SS usually means stainless steel. Well, the steel is M three ninety MK. Gen three SS Signature Series. That's what that means. Yeah, they're just calling it a Signature Series. It's a regular combat Troodon with an interceptor blade. Super cool, but understand what you're getting here. Uh, that's a custom, so that's going to be mirror polished. Um, let's see. What what on earth is this? SRM knives multi-purpose shovel. Good lord. <laughs> that's it comes with a full let's see it completed. Dang. 3CR13. Oh. Uh, maybe that's a good I don't know. Shovel community is that is that the preferred steel for a shovel? Um, obviously, what you're paying for is not the steel here. I mean, I'm joking, but legitimately, three th three three cr three cr thirteen stainless might actually be a decent. I mean, you're not going to want anything hard. It's a shovel, right? Why does it come apart like this? Oh, it's it's legitimately like here. Let's read about all the tools. Screwdriver, saw, spanner, small blade, magnesium rod and scraping tool, fire rod, whistle, come in, whistle's funny. <laughs> oh, I'm just imagining like um, like a compilation of like somebody using all this stuff, like in quick succession. Whistle, compass, glass breaker, hanging ring, hanging ring. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, as a camp tool, that's kind of neat. I I absolutely question the um, structural integrity, given that it has so many pieces. Um, that's a lot to lose. Kind of fun though. Not gonna lie. Vosteed Mini Psyop. Uh, I think these are really great considering they are LMAX and carbon fiber for 139. Yes, they are made in China, but essentially what you're looking at here is like a premium bench made. Uh, like it's almost like an alternate bug out option. Uh, it's like in between the size of the mini bug out and the large bug out, but with way better materials. Um, well, that's, I mean, that's, you know, L max versus S 30 B. There are pros and cons there, right? This thing, let's talk about the Ankylo guys. This thing is ridiculous. Have you seen the torture tests on this guy? And they have two versions. You can get it in L max for 169. Aluminum and LMAX, or you can get it in aluminum and 154CM for 129. Uh, this is a robust knife. This is this the locking system is very, very strong. Uh, you it's like a magnetically held in place leaf with a chunk of steel that engages a space on the tang that is carved out on all sides. Uh, that that's a this is a heavy duty system. I'm not saying it's as strong as the triad lock, but it's definitely overkill for a folder. And it's really cool. And the way that it actuates is via the pivot. Um, the Ankylo got a little bit of attention. This is a proprietary locking system through Vosteed, and it is beyond cool. Absolutely beyond cool. Uh, not one that you should sleep on. Uh, that's. Right now, I would say if I were to make a list of the top 20 knives of 2024, uh, the Ankylo would be there, possibly top 10. Um, that it's it's really cool. The scales are slightly thick, um, but uh, they they really innovated with that. I took that thing apart. Actually, if you want to see a great disassembly of that, check out Stasa 23's channel. The disassembly of the Ankylo. He takes it completely apart. You can have a look at it. That whole system is really, really crazy. Um, and not horribly complicated to take apart either. Uh, really impressed with that. Don't sleep on the Ankylo. Kershaw Launch 16. I have this knife here. This is the new version in raw aluminum and CPM M4 with a gray coating. In my opinion, the most attractive of the Launch 16 options. Uh, and if you are familiar with my channel, you'll know that I consider the Kershaw Launch 16 to be Probably the best dollar for dollar side opening USA automatic knife on the planet at $154.95. It's honestly extremely competitive up against some of the, the Chinese competition, which is very rare. Usually it's like, yeah, that's a great price for a USA made knife. This is a great price, period. $154 for the gray coated, uh, the gray coated M4 blade, raw aluminum. Absolutely beautiful. I think that's the best uh, uh, side opening automatic knife in Kershaw, like the launch line. That's the coolest one. Um, and uh, one of the best values on the market for this type of knife. 100% um, super cool. Love that. They just need to make a drop point version, right? They know. They know everybody wants them to do a drop point version. I guarantee it. We'll just wait. Still curious about the cipher, kind of. But then again, I'm like, eh, like. Is it, is it that much different than I need to own? I own a ton of Microtech uh, automatic OTFs, but I just haven't. It's just not enough to get me to want to pull the trigger there. Con concept Hinter lens is kind of kind of cool. Um, not not a ton from Concept here lately that I've been super interested in. Some of these are just kind of uh, designs. Seeing the CQC Seven Protec come back uh, is is pretty cool. Um, if you want an excellent starter ProTech, like if, if you're like, yeah, you know, everybody talks about ProTech, uh, Metal Complex says, you know, they, they overall make the best automatic knives. Like it's, that's a confusing statement. I've always said that ProTech is the best overall for automatic knives made in the USA, right? And then Kershaw has a very specific knife in terms of the uh, launch uh, 16 that I think is the best overall value, right? Two separate statements there. Protec overall makes the best quality. 
as you go up, you're paying more money for this knife, but Protec knives are undoubtedly more powerful in their firing action, and I think they are a step up in terms of quality. That's not to say that Kershaw doesn't make a really nice knife, but if you were to handle a Protec, like your average uh, Protec knife up against your average um, like Kershaw uh, launch series knife, the Kershaw is great, but the Protec is nicer, right? So you have to make that uh, make that decision for yourself. But the CQC7, I, th I would say, is definitely like one of those ProTech autos that it's like everybody who's ever been interested in ProTech has been interested in this knife or owns this knife. Uh, the CQC7, which is an Emerson design, I don't normally like Emerson stuff, but this translates so perfectly into an automatic knife. 7.88 inches, you get CPM 20 CV instead of uh, Protec's usual 154 CM, which there's nothing wrong with that, but you also can get it for 225 bucks. This is like the quintessential USA EDC auto. I mean, that that is a really, really good one. The other great option, which I own, is the TR3. I would say that's Protex main, like that's one of their flagships, right? Now, uh, one of my favorites, which is definitely more money. Oh my goodness, the Invictus. Now in MagnaCat, which is why it costs so much more money. The Invictus, Prometheus Design Works, that's the collaboration. Uh, so this is based on the manual PDW Invictus but it's an automatic. I have this knife, I own this knife, it's wonderful. It's so powerful, it is unbelievably powerful uh, for how slim and compact it is. Over eight inches, only 3.78 ounces. That's a wonderful knife. Super expensive versus other Protex, but definitely cool. Waiting for Protex to upgrade the steel on um, the Godfather. 154 CM is fine, but you know, we, we've all just kind of, it, that steel has kind of gone down, like that's that's kind of like a, around $100 steel now. I mean, not to say that it's inappropriate on knives that cost more money, I'm just saying, in terms of production knives that don't have any excess embellishment, right? If you're ordering a custom in something like RWL 34 or 154CM, then obviously you're going to pay more money for something like a finish that's applied to it, and it's they, they chose that steel because the finish was much easier to apply to it, right? But in terms of the production knife world, 154 CM is great. Let's say under $150 is really, really nice. But on these ProTech autos, ProTech, clear, uh, ProTech is clearly aware of it because they are kind of evolving and changing things to S45VN, um, MagnaCut, CPM 20CV. Good move. But um, I want to see that Godfather switch up and be something else. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Cleric 2. Yeah, I've been tempted. Those are really cool, like, monster OTFs. Um the mini tag it out uh carbon fiber and orange for 328 dollars what's the steel on this magna cut okay it's just hard man i really want to get excited about benchmade stuff but it's so hard it's so hard uh react gtr this is a this is an interesting knife is this an integral yeah Really cool, so random. All of this, like vents, like what's gonna happen? Are these exhaust vents? Like, it's like this is a CPU and and this is like ventilation for the heat that comes off the processor or whatever. Good Lord. Cool though, definitely cool. 8.8 .8 inches, no slouch in terms of size. 60 HRC, it's fine. Uh, some knives come in blah blah blah. Smithsonian demand their share. Blah Riaz, blah 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 blah. Who designed this? Is that an in-house design? Wouldn't surprise me. Cool knife. Haven't been able to pull the trigger on it yet. Uh, let's see here. Still full size Exos. Uh, these are weird. Like a lot of people are like, why did they release them in the two tone? Um, yeah, I agree. It's kind of weird. This is probably the best looking one, but unless they have the titanium ones, do they have the titanium ones? Probably. But the black micarta, if you're going to do this, get the bayonet because look, it's sharp on both sides. How cool is that? How often do you get a sharpened bayonet blade? Usually it's a false wedge. The reason they can do that is because this is a gravity knife. This whole frame opens up and it locks, but this is the one of the first times I've seen the lock on the full size one at 8.75 inches. Reout made LMAX steel, honestly, I'm still impressed that they can get that thing down to that price. 
The I'll tell you, speaking of Benchmade, the only Benchmade that I have been tempted by, the only one, is this guy. This is such a good looking knife. S90V. I don't even like recurves. I just love the 710. This is an iconic knife. Look how they did those. Ah, the aluminum looks nice. The FDD, the S90V. That's an appropriate range for S90V. So cool. I'm just not, man, if they wanted like 350 for it, I think I'd have done it. Uh, but 405, that's that's hard. Beg, Beg's got some cool stuff. There's the Bodacious just sitting there. No surprise, Spyderco's, one of Spyderco's biggest releases is just sitting there. Maybe they're selling like crazy. Maybe they made 10,000 of them and, you know, 8,000 of them have sold. Unlikely, but it's sitting there because nobody wants to pay $262 for that thing. It's a $160 knife, $180 at best. Uh, much better deal, honestly. Manix 2 XL Brown Micarta, probably crew wear. Yeah, way better deal. Manix, Manix knives just inexplicably <laughs> a better price despite having absolutely nothing different in terms of the, uh, the construction. RGT PM2, um, and this is like the generic three hole clip. Yeah, super nice. Super nice. Okay, are we getting... Man, I've gone 15 pages of stuff. Yeah. Hey, you can buy the Wiener Warrior. People always ask about this. Okay, here you go. Yeah, you can buy it. It's even uh, the D2 version. Everybody should own this. I, I mean, I, I have it. Stupid knife. Awesome. You got to get you one. For 60 bucks. So good. Okay. Should we move on into... Um, whoa. What the heck? Pretty nice looking, honestly. Is that steel and... I bet that... No, titanium. Wow. That's really nice. Hmm. Okay, there you go. Let's move on into coming soon. Real quick. Let's just see what we got here. Uh, the, the Techno 3... Uh, this H5 in, I'm going to buy one. Rex 121. When's the next time we're going to get, I mean, Spyderco is going to deliver some Rex 121 stuff. Uh, oh, there's a Hawk shortcut coming. I realize how, like, people are going to look at this and be like, I am money for a box cutter. Ah! Yeah, it's fine. Scream all you want. They're going to sell. Like, if you're not familiar with Hawk knives, I get it. It's a, I mean, that's a, that's an in-house USA made custom. It's not a production, just slap it together and have somebody make it on an assembly line. No, it's a custom. Yeah, it's just a box cutter, right? You can scream all you want. Those those will sell out. They just do. Um, so if you want one, you got to be ready. If you don't want one, then just ignore that it exists. Uh, neuro, neuro haptic. That's a really cool looking knife. Is that a button lock? Why you no have more pictures? That's a super cool looking knife. Boy, I like that a lot. I hope they send. That's a big one too. 8.85 inches. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. 80 bucks. Pretty cool though. Honestly, super cool knife. Civivi Biophase. What the heck? Uh, hyper pulse <laughs> is there like they name their knives after moves uh, in modern Final Fantasy games this is cool too oh stop hell little liner lot little kitchen knife good lord that thing's almost 10 inches <laughs> wow jeez big old uh, folding kitchen knife there for sure that's awesome <laughs> Okay, Concept, Kratos, Timascus. Huh, pretty cool. I don't like their Damascus as much as like Damasteel. Are we still in uh, Coming Soon? What do we got? What do we got? Boker, Saul, Lingen. Hmm. 
more spider codes, a sword, a condor smite sword. It's a sword for smiting. Oh man. You know, so many times I've wanted to smite and just didn't have the proper tool. But now with the Condor Smite Sword, I can be ready to smite at a moment's notice. 39.81 inches of smiting power. What is a smite sword? They don't know. Oh no, they... Whether you're repelling Viking raiders, defending the throne from usurpers, or preparing for the next crusade, the Condor Smite Sword is ready for your next... <laughs> ready for your next quest. They had a lot of fun right. Made from 1075 high carbon steel, which is appropriate for a sword. The razor sharp blade is as practical as it is regal. <laughs> the smite sword's handle is made from walnut wrapped in wire leading to the brass guard. Why? What, what makes this a sword ideal for smiting? I don't know, but I want it. That's a good looking smite sword. And it can be yours for the low, low price of, we do not know. Price coming soon. Kind of neat, though, honestly. Uh, here's the version I'm going to buy. I'm going to get it in G10. I will immediately remove these god-awful scales. This is the color of sadness. Uh, burnt orange. Um, I uh, This is a loathsome color. Uh, to me, if this color had a flavor, it would taste like coleslaw. Um, I will remove these. Uh, I will dig a, a hole in the ground so deep that these have very little hope of being discovered by future alien races trying to figure out what happened to humans. Um, I hate that color so much. But I will, I will remove those scales and uh, put something much better on there. Um, and then I will actually EDC this because Rex 121, if you don't know, is the king of edge retention. There is no blade material uh, on a production knife that you can get that will outperform Rex 121 in terms of edge retention. Obviously, it has to do with heat. I know people are going to argue. Heat tree geometry. What about obsidian? What about obsidian? Metal complex. What about obsidian? Shut up. Obsidian. Don't give me that. Uh, oh, purple Riyadh XOU. That's cool. Anything else of note? Anything else? Oh! VECP V3s in Magna Cut. 100% worth buying if you're into this tier. That's too much money for a knife made out of titanium and Magna Cut. My robot brain is programmed to say this because I will consider absolutely no other elements of its creation. So, the Les George knives, these are in mid-tech tier. Uh, they are 100% above um, what it costs to produce something like a Spyderco or a Benchmade. They're also using, like, Benchmade is charging you uh, for a similar price for aluminum and S90V. This is, uh, if you just want to reduce it to materials, is titanium and magnet cut. But these are being made entirely in-house by, I, it's just Les George, like one at a time, small batch. Uh, he cannot rely on volume to, you know, create that. But they're also way, they look so basic, but they are so smooth. These are incredibly precision made objects. I own one. It's one of my favorite U.S. mid-techs. It's right there with Chris Reeve, Hinderer, uh, Demco, right? Um, if you've ever looked at the XM18 and the Sabenza and thought, gosh, I wish I could have something that was like the best of both worlds, that's what it is right there. The Les George VECP. I'm personally holding out for a button lock variant, um, but yeah. Ooh. Is this just like a basic XOM? Ooh, in aluminum? Ooh, great idea. Wonderful. So, oh, they made a budget version. Oh, I love that. What a wonder. This is a great idea. Uh, so now everybody who wanted the XO and was like, cool, but I'm not paying 300 bucks for that. You'll have an aluminum and nitro V option. My guess, right around 120 to $150. That's just a guess. I have no idea. Great idea, though. Now do a full-size one that way. That's what I want. Machete? Machete. 
That's a sword. That's a sword. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. That's going to be it today, guys. This was fun. Uh, really enjoy this. Tons of interesting stuff of Blade HQ. Like, tons. Uh, these will be linked down in the description. You guys sh can uh, check all this stuff out if you want to. I'll do uh, the new arrivals page and the coming soon page. Make sure you check it out. Uh, that's going to be it today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.